this is the respiratory system. It's going to be hard for me to move it around and zoom in um, and then zoom out, so bear with me. I just want to give you an overview. On this side is um, the respiratory system with a mid-sagittal cut or almost mid-sagittal cut through the head here. And then the rest of this is in the chest, right? In the thorax. And over here, this is um, a microscopic detail of the lungs. So let's start with the head here. And you should recognize these as sinuses, right? This is the skull. And then this would be the nasal bone, right? Because this is the nose. And then this here is the nasal cavity. The nasal cap, I'm going to follow the path of air through the respiratory system because you might get a test question on that. The um, air flows then through the nostrils of the nose and into the nasal cavity here. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and keep going and see if my dog quiets. Um, these are the sinuses. They're connected to the nasal cavity, so air that flows into the nasal cavity also flows into these sinuses at the same time, and they're all lined with mucous membrane. And we talked before about the cilia on the cells that line the nasal cavity, and the cilia move the mucus then back to the throat. Well, the throat area back here is called the pharynx, P-H-A-R-Y-N-X, pharynx. So air flows from the nasal cavity or from the mouth into the pharynx, which is here, and then into the larynx. This is the larynx. You could see these folds right here are the um, vocal cords. And then the pharynx, I'm sorry, the larynx leads to the trachea. This is the trachea here. Behind the trachea, you're going to learn in, the, in a future chapter um, about the esophagus. So this is for food and drink to go down into your stomach, but air should go into the larynx and then into the trachea. This is where it's going to get tricky. So the trachea then branches into bronchi. The main bronchi, the right and left main bronchi each lead to a lung. So this is a lung that has not been cut open. This is a lung that has been cut open. The bronchi branch and get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually, they become so small we call them bronchioles. And those are not shown on this side of the figure or this um, side of the model over here. They're just too small. These are ribs forming the rib cage, right? And in between the ribs are red muscles called intercostal muscles. Inter means between. Costal um, is a word that means ribs. So in between the ribs, muscle is what that word means. Okay, over here we have that microscopic um, detail where this right here is a bronchiole, which is the tiniest bronchi. And the bronchiole is right next to, see these blue blood vessels? Those are all gonna be pulmonary arteries. Remember that arteries are defined as blood vessels that are carrying blood away from the heart. And the pulmonary arteries then are gonna be blue because they're carrying deoxygenated blood, low oxygen, high carbon dioxide, so it's blue, right? And these pulmonary arteries then get smaller and smaller and eventually lead to arterioles, which lead to capillaries. In the capillaries, the blood is going to turn, so you can call these pulmonary capillaries. Um, blood is going to turn from blue to red. And then when you come back through the venule and then the veins, now these are the pulmonary veins, which return red oxygenated blood, high oxy oxygen, low carbon dioxide, then back to the heart. The capillaries cover these bumps. Each one is called an alveolus. Alveoli is plural. Alveolus is singular. So um, if I point to one of these sacs, um, S-A-C, sac, then um, you would say alveolus, okay? Um, oh, and then the diaphragm, I forgot to mention the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a very thin dome-shaped muscle inferior to the lungs, 
and that is um, a skeletal muscle and you use it for breathing. So the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm down here are used for breathing. Oh, I did forget the epiglottis, sorry about that. Within the larynx, so let's zoom into the larynx. There is a structure right here called the epiglottis. It's blue. It's on the superior most part of the larynx. It is a part of the larynx. And when you swallow, it folds down over the opening to the larynx. So it moves from this position to that position when you swallow to keep food and water going in the esophagus down to the stomach, not into the larynx. So once again, I'm gonna try and zoom in. There, here is the epiglottis. That it's it's made of cartilage, and on this fig on this model, everything made of cartilage is colored blue.